Well, good morning, church. Glad you're here today. Welcome. Welcome back. For those of you who are the first time that you've been here, to, we're glad you're back. But anyway, we want to encourage you all as we worship and come into this time of uh, just really giving the Lord praise because he has been faithful all the way through this. And as we continue, uh, we want to continue to be safe and allow the Lord to just keep working on our hearts and lives uh, in good ways and build great faith. Happy Father's Day, all the dads. Happy Father's Day. Glad you're here today. May those kids bless you all day long, okay? Would you all stand as we can begin our service together? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time. We ask your blessing on each person here. Thank you, Lord, that we can celebrate uh, dads. And what a great, awesome day that can be. And we pray, Lord, that you'd go before us in the worship and the time together, the teaching. Encourage us in you, Lord. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for the worship.
you may be seated. Well, look at our friend here. Clint, come up here a minute. I need some help here with our social distancing, and I want to encourage you with what is six feet. Right over here, you stand in front of the screen over there. Got to back up a little bit more. Got to back up a little more. Right here. Look at that. Six feet, okay? Six feet. You didn't know that, did you? Huh? Little. You all have been doing really well. I appreciate all the social distancing around here, wearing the mask and everything for the service. But we want to give you a visual, visual uh, kind of aid. Thank you, Clint. Good job. Good job. <laughs> for how, get out of here, alligator. How to social distance. And uh, I appreciate uh, you all doing that uh, really well as we continue to be safe as a church and uh, outside there as well. It's always good to get out and breathe some good air, so that's always good as well. Um, two announcements. Uh, one, uh, there is a sign-up back in the back uh, for helping to sanitize uh, in between the services. So right after this service, we go through all the chairs and everything that could be touched, and we do that, and we need some help with that. So if you could sign up, there's a sign-up sheet back in the back uh, for that. The other announcement just concerns some of our youth group and uh, elementary uh, school uh, kind of events that are going to come up um, on July the 18th, I believe it is. We're going to be actually having a promotion Sunday for the kids, and on that Sunday, uh, we'll have some good Sunday school classes for the kids and everything, so that's going to be starting up, and then you'll hear more about the youth group. Uh, we have a couple of events uh, for them uh, coming up in July as well, so slowly opening things up and doing it in a safe way. Okay, well, you guys are awesome. Uh, we love you all and so glad that we can be back like this, uh, being able to worship together. Uh, would you all stand as we continue in our worship together? Happy Father's Day. Men, happy Father's Day. And we're going to be talking about the value of your role as men. And so we appreciate all the different ways that you show the love of Christ. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for today and for Father's Day. We ask your blessing on each of the men here. We pray, Lord, you'd encourage us in you today. Help us to see life from your perspective. Help us to grow in our relationship with you and to develop a strong faith as men and women uh, that have that ability to lean into you. I pray, Lord, you'd encourage us to slay the giants uh, before us. Thank you for each one. We Ask your blessing on this time as we connect with you through worship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please remain standing for worship. Burdens on them with 
Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for your presence in our lives. Jesus, the name above all names, we give you all the praise and all the glory, knowing, Lord, that you have brought us through so much over the last couple months. And we thank you, Lord, and praise you for that. We know that you are a good God who leads down good paths and that we can trust you and lean into you. And as we do that fully, there's a sense of your peace and uh, just all the anxiety, all the things that so much can trouble our hearts can be pushed aside because we're in your presence. So I thank you, Lord, for that today. And I thank you, Lord, for how you have watched over us as a church family. And I pray that you might continue to do that good work in all of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for today that we can look at what you want to help us as men to be about. I ask your blessing on all the fathers that are here today. Encourage them today and help them to continue being the dads, the fathers that love you and love well within their homes. Bless this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. It's good to see you all again. And uh, for all the dads out there, happy Father's Day. Uh, May it just be a blessing all throughout the day. For those of you that are online with us and are joining us this morning, uh, we're glad that you're online as well. And may there be a blessing uh, to you as you connect with us. Uh, It's so good that we have options and we can have the three different types of services What a blessing that is. So everybody can get connected and be a part of this church family. Today, I want to primarily address men. And and, and women, you got to hang in there because there's going to be some applications for you as well. So don't just tune me out and go, okay, this is a men's day. Okay, I get it. And just tune out. No, just listen and you'll see the application down the road. Um, Today, I want to talk about some giants. Because we've been looking at this whole series of slaying giants, and I mean, as warriors in Christ, men and women, uh, God calls us to overcome. God calls us to slay the giants around us, and we've been dealing with some of those areas, like loneliness, anxiety. We talked about avoiding things last week, a lot of things that just need to be slayed, and that in the power of Christ, we can overcome and allow God to work in our lives in that way. But today... I want us to lay down the swords. Today, men and women, warriors in Christ, I want you to lay down the sword because my title today is Let This Giant Live. You see, there's something going on in our culture today where so many people would like to just say, you know what? When it comes to masculinity, when it comes to manhood, We don't need that. Matter of fact, because of all the abuses and things, I mean, come on. We live in a culture where masculinity is under attack. Being a man, a good, decent person, valued by so many within our homes and things, and yet, because of the abuse, and I get that, all of a sudden, masculinity is under the attack. Some would like to just kind of push it aside and try to make out a a, a kind of a nice masculinity that maybe is so different. It's almost like a genderless kind of masculinity. That's sad. That's sad that that's happening within our culture. You see, the masculinity that Jesus modeled was not an abusive masculinity. It was one that treated and valued the women around him with much respect and dignity. It was one where Jesus modeled what it would look like to to understand strength uh, under control. Jesus was always that example for us. It's a masculinity that takes one's strength and and uses it for good. It's a masculinity that that Stu Weber uh, described in his book entitled Tender Warrior as one of uh, the heart of a warrior, a man of God, uh, one who exercises the fruits of the spirit, humility, respect, a tenderness, but then there's also the warrior in man, and that's the strength, the godliness, the protection uh, for those that we love. Tender warrior, the balance there, and I I view that as a a goal in my own life, to be a tender warrior, to be one that, that offers strength and protection, but also 
continues to allow the Lord to work in my heart and keep humility before, before me. When it comes to manhood today, there's, there seems to be two different narratives that are taking place within our culture. Uh, the first one is the, the macho narrative. <laughs> I grew up in a home where uh, I heard this a lot. Stop crying. What are you crying about? I, I, I'll give you something to cry about, right? You ever hear that growing up? You know? I'll never forget my dad. Uh, the one time I was misbehaving in church, I know that's probably a surprise to you. Really? The, Doug? Yeah. I was misbehaving in church. I thought my dad was asleep in the choir loft, but he wasn't. He had one eye on me up in the balcony, and he saw me and my buddies goofing around during the service. And so we just happened to walk to church that day, and it's a good mile. And I remember walking home, and the whole time, you know, I'm in tears, and my dad would just say, you're still going to get a spanking. You're still going to get a spanking. No, no, come on. My dad had that uh, ability to kind of, uh, a man's man, uh, he was a fisherman, a woodworker, all those things, and uh, it was hard for him to talk about his feelings. Later on in life, we got that kind of connection, and that was really cool. The macho narrative, quit crying, uh, suck it up, be a man, stop being such a sissy, and some of you grew up in those types of homes. Feelings push down. The other narrative the other narrative that you see uh, happening today, especially within our culture and 30-something uh, and younger are dealing with this a lot within the school districts. Uh, it, the other narrative is one where we see um, so much of, uh, let's not have any distinction between the sexes. Uh, men and women are the same. And, and what we need is to, to sanitize masculinity. What we need is, is this uh, genderless kind of culture. And as a result, manhood and masculinity is pushed down, something that I believe you're wired for as a man. I think created in the image of God, that's part of that whole value is knowing who you are as a man or who you are as a woman and understanding those distinctiveness. John Piper, he wrote this concerning this kind of uh, flattening God's call. He says uh, on, on manhood, he says, when, when we teach this, we, we flatten God's call on little boys to become distinctly men. We forfeit both great restraint on male vice as well as great God-ordained incentive for the male, male valor. Let me restate that. When we flatten God's call on little boys to become distinctly men, we forfeit both great restraint on male vice, as well as a great God-ordained incentive for male valor. I want to answer two questions today. We're going to look at a couple passages. The first question is, is there a distinction between being, being a male and being a man? I mean, you can be born a man, but are you really? I mean, have that male distinction, but are you really the man that God has called you to be? And the second question is, do men have a unique responsibility um, as men? So first of all, let's look at, is there a distinction between being a male and being a man? And the passage I want to look at is 1 Corinthians chapter 16, um, beginning in verse 13. And this is the end of this uh, letter that Paul's writing, and he gets very specific to the men as he ends this letter to the people in Corinth. Um, and in this passage, Paul says this, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong, let all that you do be done in love. I love the distinction. Our songs, our movies, our shows are trying to get you to buy the lie that distinction means inequality, and that's a lie from the pit of hell. That's not true. Uh, you can have a very distinct quality as a man or as a woman, and there's equality. God created us as image bearers with equality. But there might be different roles and distinctions and things, and, and that's who God wired us to be as well. And, and when we try to just uh, kind of move that aside, there's a problem. Here he says, act like a man, and then he specifically gives some very specific directions on what that looks like. And the very first thing that he talks about here is being watchful. 
being watchful. Literally, make sure that you're not inattentive. Make sure that you're not just kind of looking around as if, you know, life is all good and kind of like the little boy who has all these shiny objects looking around. But instead, be watchful. Instead, be aware of what's going on. Be aware that there's some destructive things going on in our culture that we need to be watchful and aware of and on guard for because as a tender warrior, God calls us to take that responsibility of protecting those that we love. He wants us to make sure <laughs> uh, that we grow up in manhood and understand the value of being watchful, being a protector to, to those that we love and care about deeply. I, I love seeing little boys act up, right? They do that all the time. Um, they they kind of do all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, they kind of make sure that they're just being silly and doing different things like that. But, but what's sad is sometimes when it comes to manhood, uh, we push aside. We, don't, we, don't, we stay the little boy, and we don't grow up, and we don't see the responsibilities that God has called us to be about within the home. And, that, and that's sad. He, he wants us to be watchful. He wants us to understand what's at stake. He wants us to be careful to protect those that we love. Years ago, Katie was dating somebody, and as uh, she was dating somebody, uh, there some came up. I don't even know what it came up you know, about, but it was something as a warrior, as a tender warrior, I cared a whole lot about. And I said, okay, um, he's not coming into the house again until I have the talk. And guess what? They tested me, right? And so he shows up, and I said, okay, you're not allowed in the house until I have the talk. And I'll never forget that talk that we had walking in the neighborhood over there on Bryn Mawr, walking the neighborhood and having the man-to-man -man kind of talk and kind of a sense of here's the values and here's what I'm looking for. And at the end, you know, it was kind of like, thanks, Mr. D. That was a good talk. I needed that. <laughs> I go, you're welcome into our house again. Being a protector, tender warriors protect. Tender warriors make sure that their homes are protected well. Notice as well, it says, stand firm in the faith. Every one of those words in this whole passage matters. Stand firm in the faith. You want to act like a man, you stand firm in the faith. Uh, you need to not stand firm in discipline or stand firm in your abilities or all the different things that you can do and kind of make things happen. But stand firm in the finished work of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for you. Stand firm in Christ. Stand firm. Why? Because so oftentimes we're prone to making mistakes and doing things where we blow it and we need uh, the forgiveness of Christ. We need the strength that comes from Christ to help us even overcome some of those weaknesses that we have. Um, as men, as brothers in Christ, there's strength, but there's a sense of humility as well when we're able to deal with the struggles that we have as men and own it and allow the Lord to work in our lives. That kind of strength is so important. Have you ever heard, uh, you know, where people say, well, the loudest one in the room is probably the weakest one in the room? Uh, when we have this kind of male macho kind of thing where we just kind of push people aside and we're loud and obnoxious and things like that, uh, and we're never owning our own kind of shortcomings, that's not being strong in the Lord. That's not having that firm faith. That's not leaning into him. But when we stand firm in the faith and allow God to reveal our shortcomings and say, okay, these are the ways that I'm, I'm messing up. These are the ways that, that I'm, I'm, I'm making sure that, that I'm dealing with uh, the things in my heart that are wrong. When we do that, there's a whole different way of showing our masculinity. What happens when we fail to own our shortcomings? Next thing you know, shame just kind of takes root in our spirit. When we don't deal with what God is instructing us in our faith to develop and grow in, next thing you know, we either withdraw or we go the other way and we get angry and we lash out. And both of that little boy avoiding relationships when things aren't going right or the lashing out are things that impact the women in our lives, that impact 
our kids in so many ways. And God would encourage us to have that standing firm in the faith where we're growing and developing areas to overcome the shortcomings rather than allowing the shame to take root in our spirit. Little boys never deal with the shame. Men deal with the shame, and they're able to overcome it in the strength of the Lord. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, even when it means ironing, sharpening iron, and one man talking to another man and helping him grow in his relationship with Jesus. That makes all the difference. We can overcome. And uh, I like this. Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Be strong. And that strength that we have is uh, oftentimes exercised in dying to self and serving others. It's a strength that comes through Christ and, and how Christ calls us to, to be working in and through our lives, even in the failures and all those other things, but allowing the Lord to strengthen us. And then the last thing that he says in this passage, and then from all this, let all that you do, let it be done in love. And that motivating force for masculinity is love above everything else. It's what encourages us to be tender warriors. It's not easy. It's not easy as a man to die to self. It's not easy to kind of push aside the ego. It's not easy doing that. But in Jesus and allowing the Lord to work in our lives, we can overcome. Think about people in your lives and the examples in your lives from even the scriptures. You look at King David and some of the failures that he had, but he was a man <laughs> who was a warrior, and God kept working his life, and towards the end, God said, here's a man after my own heart. God is raising up a new generation of tender warriors that are watchful, that stand firm in the faith, act like men, strong, <laughs> because all that they do, out of love, they do that for one another. In your life, how is that working in your life, in your marriage, in your relationships? I think about every man that's here today and young men, boys that are here today. And I see a God that is inviting a masculinity that we're secure in because it comes through that relationship with Jesus Christ. And you look at his model and look at how he lived life. And to me, the more that we look to Jesus as our example and we live life the way Jesus did, that's not a soft kind of masculinity. That's a strong masculinity because it's full of strength, full of purpose, full of direction. And just as Jesus would say, I came to lay down my life willingly, we willingly lay down our lives for those around us and those that we love. You see, the second question today is, not only is there this distinctive kind of qualities of manhood, but what's our role? There's a passage in Colossians chapter 3 that says this, Wives, submit yourselves to your husband as fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. You see, God is calling men to be spiritual leaders in their homes. And when we take that role seriously and we take responsibility to be that spiritual leader, the tender warrior in our home, and we're saying, you know what, I'm going to take it and I'm going to lead, I'm going to do it in a strong way. When we do that, any woman will follow that leadership. Why? Because it's so motivated by love and dying to self and caring about the other person and making sure that that woman in your life is the treasure that God 
has called you to bless and to, to be there for and to love well. And God wants us to have that responsibility in our homes. And for some of us, maybe we've kind of bailed on that. Maybe we've kind of pushed it aside. Maybe you have a wife that just has some strong strength in that area. I would say don't abdicate that responsibility. Keep developing it. Keep allowing the Lord to help you lead. And you lead in a way where you're that tender warrior and you do it with the strength of the Lord. And you make sure that you're the one that helps to create the right atmosphere in that home. You never give up. You keep showing Jesus to those around you and allowing the Lord to work. It's about servant leadership. And I truly believe one of the most masculine things that I do in our home is wash dishes. One of the most masculine things that I do in my home are doing those things like uh, dishes or some laundry or some of those things that Maybe nobody else really wants to do, or you know, but it could be a help, right, to those around you. And so oftentimes as men, we push those aside and say, I'll mow the yard, or, you know, I'll do that other stuff. Uh, I'll make sure the car gets taken care of. And maybe we've never really asked our spouse, what do you need from us? Or what about our kids? What do you need from us? Be the spiritual leader, sit down, talk. Develop godliness within your homes. Lead, take the initiative. And women, you're probably saying, you know, well, what's the application for us? I like this prayer. Father, encourage my husband to lead his life diligently in your ways. Pray. Seek the Lord. Pray for your husbands to, to be the husbands that God has called them to be, the fathers that God has called them to be. Pray, never stop praying. And maybe when they make some mistakes along the way, you pray even more and you say, God, help them to pick up the pieces and keep moving on and to allow the forgiveness of Christ to help them and encourage them. But you pray for them and support them, and, but you don't take away the responsibility of them being that spiritual leader in your home. And for women, I think there's an application from that passage as well when it talks about being watchful, standing firm, strong in your faith. Uh, act like women. I, th I think you could add that. Uh, be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. I think that's a great model for both men and women, both warriors in Christ, for making strong relationships and strong, healthy homes. Dads, don't be discouraged. When you make mistakes or when you think, you know what, you're not having any pick, impact on your kids, when you feel like a failure or you feel like, you know what, it's not worth it, I want you to know it is worth it. And keep allowing the Lord to work in your life and to give you the strength. And know that God one day will look at you and say, well done, good and faithful servant. You didn't cave in to what culture said manhood is all about. But instead, you listened to the voice from the scriptures. And you said, this is what manhood is all about. And I want to be that kind of tender warrior. I'm never going to give that up. I'll be that kind of tender warrior. Dads, I, I want to encourage you with a little video here today as we end. Uh, we're going to end on kind of a lighter note. Uh, and then I'm going to pray uh, for our men here. But let's show that video because it's a, a good happy Father's Day kind of day. No matter how old we are, we always remember what our dads say and do. My dad is more like Jesus than your dad. No, -uh. My dad doesn't let anybody eat any food until we pray for it. My dad prays for one minute every day. You know what? Our church has pancakes. This is what my sister and mom use for their blush. <laughs> my dad says that mean kids never know what they're talking about. Because their parents don't know what they're talking about either. My dad says to punch meanies in the face. Then my mom says, don't ever do that. And my dad goes to time out. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's beard is itchy whenever he kisses me. My dad takes me to church 
so we could learn to be just like Jesus. My daddy prays for me. Then he makes me stop talking and go to bed. Then I get a flashlight and read my po- comic book. That's a sin. He's sinning. No, I'm not. Sinner. No, I'm not. R2. 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 My dad said that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. My dad never stays mad at me. My dad taught me to forgive because Jesus forgives us every time we ask. I want a mohawk. I wish I had hair. It's okay. Your hair will probably grow back. Thanks for being our dads for all our lives. Thanks. Thanks for all that you do. You do make a difference. Men, boys, would you all stand? All the men, all the masculinity in this room, only you stand, okay? I want to pray for you. Yes. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for the men that are in this room. I pray, Lord, that you'd encourage us to be tender warriors. I thank you for the work that they do as fathers, and sometimes it's hard work. Sometimes it's very difficult. Lord, would you bless these fathers today and encourage them? I pray, Lord, that they would not allow shame to to overcome their lives and just kind of cause them to retreat or to to lash out. I, I pray, Lord, that you would help them to overcome that shame through the power of Christ. And you'd help them to be the leader in their homes and to be the one that is that tender warrior and encourager, the father of these kids. Bless them today, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you'd encourage these young men, these boys, to grow up and see the value of growing in Christ. And as we grow in Christ and as we become more mature in you, Lord, there's the best kind of life to live is that life where we lean into you and trust you. I pray for all the young men that they would know masculinity in a good way because we look to Jesus, the one who shows us what true masculinity is all about. Help us, Lord, to look to you but allow you to work in all of our lives. Bless all the men that are here today. And may they continue to grow in their faith. And would you help them, Lord, to model for others what servant leadership and what it means to lay down their lives willingly for those around them that they love. Help them to see that value and how much of a role, how important that role is within our homes. Bless them today. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would everybody stand? Glad you're here as we close our service together.
stars declare who you are i'm so unworthy but still you team we always appreciate always appreciate the worship and leading us in that way thank you thank you for doing that and all the people said have a great day in christ and happy father's day